everyone, Miss Go Electric here. Today is Sunday, December 15th, 2024, and this is The Current, weekly EV news in about 10 minutes. By now, you've probably seen headlines related to unknown flying objects near New Jersey and Maryland. Observers describe these flying objects as drones or remote-controlled aircraft. Based on these videos, they look a lot like electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, or eVTOLs, which we cover on this program. This video appears to show the helix from Pivotal. Pivotal, a California eVTOL manufacturer, began shipping its helix aircraft to customers during the summer of 2024. One of those customers happens to be Modern Technology Solutions, Inc., a defense contractor, which has leased vehicles to the U.S. Air Force under their AF Work Agility Prime program. Another company, Taro Dynamics, has featured launches from the sea in partnership with the Navy and has a shape which appears to closely resemble the lighting pattern in some of the videos we've seen. Usually, the aircraft are operated by a single pilot. The military has been testing them as unmanned configurations with potential use for logistics and material transport, emergency response and intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions. MTSI has also worked directly with the federal government to develop and validate systems for an urban air mobility transportation system. Of course, Pivotal is one of many eVTOL manufacturers which is currently producing and testing aircraft. Beta Technologies also has a contract to supply the Air Force with their aircraft, which has been testing for at least six months. Toyota-backed Joby Aviation delivered their aircraft to the Air Force in September of 2023. Civilians can also buy personal EV tolls on the open market. For example, in 2022, Jetson began producing its $128,000 single pilot EV toll in Poland. They have nearly 500 reservations for their 2025 production run and are now taking orders for 2026. Many personal EV tolls are listed under the ultralight category of aircraft, which means they do not require a pilot's license. A flight plan does not need to be filed with the Federal Aviation Administration, as is the case with most private airplanes and helicopters. For that reason, government officials would not necessarily be aware of related aerial activity. At the end of October, the FAA issued a final rule for the qualification and training that instructors and pilots must have to fly an aircraft in the new power lift category, which covers EV tolls for commercial applications. This is the first time a new category has been introduced since helicopters in the 1940s. Xpeng Aero, the flying car business of Chinese electric car manufacturer Xpeng, has begun construction of a production facility in Guangzhou, China. This will produce an EV toll as part of the Land Aircraft Carrier Package, which is undergoing final testing. Over 2,000 pre-orders have been made, and the factory is designed to produce 10,000 units annually starting in 2026. With many EV toll companies slated to begin deliveries in 2025, we can expect to see more new vehicles in the sky. Would you take a ride in one? Let's get back down to earth with some EV charging news. Charging network EVGO has successfully closed a $1.25 billion loan from the U.S. Department of Energy with $1.05 billion of principal and $193 million of capitalized interest. The funding is a part of the DOE's Title 17 Clean Energy Financing Program, and the loan will finance the construction of approximately 7,500 new fast charging stalls at roughly 1,100 locations. That will represent a tripling of EVGO's network to over 10,000 stalls within the five-year deployment timeline. Their plan is to deploy chargers in high-traffic areas across multiple states, including Arizona, California, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and Texas. The dispensers will be compatible with all new EVs with NACs and CCS connectors. EVGO says the initiative is expected to create more than 1,000 jobs in the U.S. with over 700 positions in construction, engineering, and maintenance. IANA, the charging network consortium of eight automakers, is partnering with gas station, convenience store, and restaurant operator Sheets to deploy charging dispensers at 50 locations across the Midwest and eastern portion of the country. 
All of the installations are scheduled for completion by the end of 2026, and the first three, located in Springfield and Willoughby, Ohio, and Scranton, Pennsylvania, are slated to go online within the next two weeks. The companies will also launch loyalty programs in 2025, aimed to be mutually beneficial for customers. Electrify America announced their partnership this week with Costco Wholesale. Under the company's commercial division, Electrify Commercial, Costco owns the dispensers, which are currently active across five locations in California, Colorado, and Florida. This is an important differentiator to typical Electrify America locations because Costco's ownership allows Costco to set their own price. The Electrify America app will still show these stations and handle charging sessions as usual. This week, Nissan became the latest brand to receive access to the Tesla supercharging network for their Aria SUVs in the US and Canada. Starting December 10th, Aria owners gained access to over 17,800 Tesla superchargers, which will be reflected in the Nissan Energy Charge Network via the My Nissan app. Aria owners will require a specific Nissan-provided North American charging standard adapter, which is available for $235 through their dealership in order to utilize Tesla superchargers. This Nissan-specific adapter will include a small plastic piece which fits between the two DC pins in the charge port. Looks like Mercedes is up next in line for access. We will keep you posted when that happens. I attended a webinar with the Joint Office of Energy and Transportation this week, which highlighted the progress and status of the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program, also known as NEVI. As a reminder, that program includes the deployment of 500,000 chargers along each state's highway corridors every 50 miles to be completed by 2030. Gabe Klein, director of the program at the Joint Office, mentioned public charging ports or connectors in the USA have doubled since 2020, with over 200,000 available today. He also said nearly 25,000 more federally funded ports are currently underway. The first NEVI station was opened about a year ago, and as of today, about 240 NEVI ports are active across 14 states. During the webinar, the Joint Office announced the launch of a new website which provides data and status updates on the NEVI funding and deployment for better transparency and visibility. I'll link the site below if you want to investigate further. During the presentation, Steve Burkett from Plug and Play EV also spoke and said based on his data, the average turnaround time of 39 sites so far is 117 days. Just this week, Texas and Michigan opened their first stations under the program. Now that all states and territories have approved proposals, we are on to the next phase in which more states will install dispensers and many more come online. Have you used a Nevi station yet? Traveling nationwide from Michigan, I have used several. Some of the taxpayer-funded Nevi stations I've seen have priced their energy much higher than other local market DC fast charging rates. I hope the market forces behind the deployment of these stations and the rapid growth of Tesla's competing supercharger network will put an end to predatory pricing practices. EV battery longevity and pricing seems to be only getting better. A new study from Stanford predicts that EV batteries will have a 40% longer life than previously expected. As a well-accepted practice across the vast majority of laboratory battery studies, testing is usually conducted under constant current discharge profiles. In this latest study from Stanford, the researchers designed four types of EV discharge profiles, from the standard constant discharge to dynamic discharging based on real driving data. The research team tested 92 commercial lithium-ion batteries for more than two years across those four discharge profiles. In the end, the more realistically the profiles reflected actual driving behavior, the higher EV life expectancy climbed. Specifically, for the same average current and voltage window, Varying the dynamic discharge profile led to an increase of up to 38% in equivalent full cycles at end of life. Explainable machine learning revealed the importance of both low-frequency current pulses 
and time-induced aging under these realistic discharge conditions. This is great news for EV owners. Previously, general average lifespan for EVs had been estimated between 100,000 to 200,000 miles or about 15 to 20 years before heading to its second life application. A 38% increase in lifespan would mean those batteries lasting for anywhere between 138,000 to 276,000 miles or 21 years to about 28 years. That's of course the average of current batteries on the market today. As we've previously reported, some battery makers have projected a 1 million mile lifespan for their upcoming products. Internal combustion engines have an average lifespan of about 10 years or 200,000 miles with significant maintenance costs necessary to reach those maximums. Another study published this week came from Bloomberg NEF. Their analysis of lithium-ion battery prices showed that the cost of battery packs have dropped the most this year since 2017. The study analyzed 343 data points from a range of applications including electric cars, buses, and commercial vehicles. According to the study, prices have dropped 20% in 2024, down to an average of $115 per kilowatt hour. It is typically stated that internal combustion engine and all electric vehicles will reach price parity when battery pack costs are lower than $100 per kilowatt hour. Bloomberg has projected parity in 2026. Using the data they have collected since 2010, they predict a price of $69 per kilowatt hour by 2030. Of course, policy and other global economic shifts can affect those outcomes. Affordability improvements are necessary for increased EV adoption. If raw materials and battery pack pricing can continue to drop, and automakers prioritize efficiency, enabling more range from smaller battery packs, the value of going electric will be even better. When do you think EV price, range, longevity, and performance will be universally greater than internal combustion engine competition in the passenger vehicle segment? Well, that wraps up today's show. If you enjoyed this episode of The Current, we would appreciate it if you shared it with others. To continue producing this show, we need to see growing viewership. And if you haven't already, please join me on other social media platforms, including X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for up to the minute insights and other exclusive coverage. Thank you for watching and until next week, drive, fly, ride, go electric.